part of a book series over the book Unlimited. So if you want to get your book, you have to come this Wednesday to get your book. Amen. For next Sunday, uh, I don't know if you guys know Mark, but he's very humble, so he doesn't want me to mention anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're bringing the hoppers in for a special concert just for him. So, no. so I'm not going to mention anything about that. Right? But I will say that we're bringing the hoppers in for a concert. Uh, that concert starts at 5 o'clock. The doors will open at 4. Does it cost anything to get in? But there will be a love offering uh, during or after that will go towards their ministry. So this time let's bow and bless the offering. <coughs> Dear Lord, we come to you today to give thanks for everything, this beautiful sunshine and all the weather that you've given us and the great variations that show uh, what we can endure and what power you hold. We ask that you take these offerings and use them to the best of your ability and your son's name we pray. Amen.
Father, we praise you today because you're sovereign. Father, we praise you whether we feel like it. We praise you, Father, whether we're on the mountain or in the valley. We praise you because you are good and you are worthy of our praise, Father. And the desire of our heart is just to be closer and closer to you, Father. To know your heart.
and you love for us to talk to you, Father, that is still so amazing to me. And God, I thank you that as we do draw closer to you, and as you pull us into you, Father, every single fear fades away. Thank you, God, that we no longer have to be a slave to the fears that, that come because, God, you wrap us up in your love, and we thank you for that today.
God, that you split that sea for us that we can walk right through it. And no matter what is in front of us, Father, we have the assurance that you go before us. No matter what we are facing, no matter what is around the corner that maybe we haven't even seen, we can rest assured because you go before us. You live within us, Father, and you never leave us. You never forsake us. And we thank you for those promises. We thank you for the spirit, God, that you have put inside of us. And we thank you for your love. We give you praise and honor today. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good to see so many of you. Thank you for the choice to come and worship Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So uh, so good to see you this morning. We are starting our summer story series. Uh, The summer we like to just kind of bring out some old familiar stories throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, maybe bring out some hidden insights and uh, highlight those stories to remind us one how good God is and how faithful He is. But uh, but what is our our role in this? Uh, we have to trust Him, and that's the theme throughout. Uh, going to be the theme throughout this summer uh, in this message today. So what I want to do is we're going to talk about faith over fear today, a very familiar story. We'll get to it in just a moment. But what I want to do is kind of walk through the top ten, or maybe the ten most common fears. And what I'm going to do is I have the names of each phobia in my notes. But what I have decided to do, being from South Georgia, living in East Texas for 20 years now, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce each one of those. Are we good? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just tell you what the fears are. Are we on the same page? All right. All right. So I don't need anybody picking on me or anything else on the way out. Okay. <laughs>
a whole lot about those things. Okay, it's all I can advise you to do is stay away from those things you're afraid of as much as possible. But the fear we're talking about today, the types of things that bring us fear, are actually things God is saying, yeah. And I want you to embrace that. Because anything that God is calling us to do, anything that God is calling us to become or to give up, surrender to Him, it may cause us to be afraid. What is that going to cost me? What is that going to look like? Am I qualified? Am I enough for that? What is that going to look like? Because we all want the details. And that's where fear comes in. When what God is asking of me conflicts with what I want to do, how I want to spend my time, how I want to spend my money, how I want to use my talent, and who's in the room or who's in that space, when I use said talent, when we have conflict based on what God wants us to do, that's where fear comes in. Am I going to trust Him that whatever He's calling me to do or to change or to surrender, even though He knows I'm going to be afraid and I'm going to experience a little bit of anxiety, am I going to trust Him that He's going to be with me? See, that's where it is today. Because every day you and I encounter that on some level. Because everything that God is requiring of us calls something. Amen. Is today going to be about me? Or is today going to be about him? Is today going to be about what I want to do? Or is it going to be about what he wants me to do? Amen. And thank the Lord, there's a lot of throughout the day that those match up. But what about those times when it doesn't? So let me share with you the secret to coming, overcoming your fear that's on the screen. Is faith is the antidote to fear. And here's what I want to say to this before we kind of get into our story today. is The more energy we give to our faith, the less power our fears have over us. So the more I believe, the more I trust, the more I engage in this relationship with Jesus, and the more that I cooperate with the Holy Spirit, that the God in person that's within me, that the more I engage in Him, and allow Him to strengthen me, allow Him to guide me, allow Him to say, okay, you've got this. You may not understand it, you may not see all the steps, but you've got this because God is with you. So what about me? What if, and I've got to think about this week. If we're going to talk about this, then I've got to be real with you, okay? So what is that fear that you genuinely have? We're talking about the spiritual stuff. And for me, it always comes back to, I don't feel like I'm enough. I, I don't feel like I'm enough. And what I mean by that is, what I feel like God is calling me to be as far as a husband, a father, a friend, a pastor, whatever the case may be, whatever title I get for a certain season or for my life, I feel like there's many seasons and there's many moments when something I'm faced with, whether it's a decision or whatever, that I go, I don't know what to do. Can anybody relate? And as guys, maybe most of us, not all of us, we don't want to admit, I'm not leaving your ladies out, we feel the same way, but there's, I don't think I've been a lady, I'm a guy. Okay, so I'm just saying. Right, for so no. For so no. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody's going to jump on that. Okay. <laughs> so, from a guy's perspective, I feel this burden to have the answers, to know where we're going, and in the moment of every crisis, be able to step up and know exactly what to do and what to say. Amen. Yeah. And I don't. Yet. That's what God has called us to do. Amen. And here's the lie. Here's the deception. The enemy would have me to believe that, yes, you're not enough. It'll also try to convince me that you'll never be enough. No matter how much you follow Jesus or how many good people you have around you. So 
when I think about that fear that I have, this fear is causing me anxiety throughout the years. How does that antidote work for that? Here's, here's what it looks like for me. Maybe this will encourage you. Here's what God has to remind me of constantly. I've been faithful so far. Why would I abandon you now? That's right. You look throughout Scripture. There's never been a person or a group that God has said, I need you to do this. Without Him leading them, being with them, all the way through. But it seems like every time there's been doubt from the people, there's been a wondering, there's been fear. And so I've been thinking, this has nothing to do with the story, but I'm thinking about how this fits. When Jesus gave his great commission, he said, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, right? Baptizing them. All that. I mean, I mean, that's a big assignment. But he closes that out with something very powerful that I hope you hear today. Is he says, and I am always with you. So if God is saying, go, if God is saying, stay, if God is saying speak up, if God is saying confront, if God is saying forgive, if God is saying serve, if God is saying surrender, whatever it is that God might be saying, if He's saying it, He promises that He will be with you every step. Amen. And they not mean He's going to be there every step. Okay, then He come on now. Let's go. Come on. Let's take your steps. So let's get into our story. Matthew chapter 14, beginning verse 25. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. I love that Jesus kept it simple. <laughs> I don't need anything else. Just, all right, well then, come on. He said that Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and called him. You have a little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. You see, Peter had enough faith to step out of the boat. And we need to give him credit for that. Amen. Amen. Right. He had enough faith to trust that it was Jesus and all those sort of things. But where he lacked faith was when he got into the water. Right? Or maybe say, onto the water. That's where he hit Okay, so let's kind of think about the lessons from Peter's walking on water experience. I have four of them for those who are watching and trying to keep open notes. The first one is this. Make sure you're going toward Jesus when you step out on faith. That's good. I think this is a big one, guys. Because there's a lot of things we get ourselves into that we cry out for help. We say, Lord, where are you? Where were you? And God is saying... I had nothing to do with that. You did that on your own. So, so for practical purposes, I want you to maybe think about, okay, when I'm thinking about what I want to do or maybe what God wants me to do in regard, maybe of purchases, maybe of relationships and commitments, I want you to think about and consider how many times you found yourself sinking, you found yourself stressed out, you found yourself overwhelmed, not as a result of something you did that God was leading you to do. However, it, were, it was things that you committed to and you decided to do that later on you realized, no, 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 that was more of something I wanted to do. So the first thing is just what we said, make sure it's, it's Jesus that's calling out to you. In fact, 
Notice that Peter said, Lord, if it's you. you see, Peter was them, right? You know, it's dark, it's stormy. But all this stuff is happening. There's waves. And don't you know much about those boats in those days? But you can Google it later. It wasn't like this cruise line boat and ship, right? I mean, this was a boat that, I mean, I get seasick. I get back tar sick. All these sort of things. I mean, imagine. I mean, I wouldn't be worried about a ghost. I would be on the back, right? Like, when is this going to stop? Because I'm sick, okay? So all of this is happening. And they really just see an image. And they don't know. They're thinking it's a ghost. They're thinking it's somebody else. They're thinking it's something else. Whatever the case may be. But Peter kind of gets an information that, what is it? It's going to be really cool when he calls out. Is it you? So, God is, maybe you sense, God is asking you to do something. Surrender something. Change something. Transform. Whatever it is. Give something. The first thing we want to consider is, is this Jesus? Is he the one leading you? Is he the one guiding me? And let me reassure you here before we go on to the second one. Is Jesus, once you know his voice, you know his voice. Amen. It's not about recognizing him. For me personally, it's not about me not recognizing his voice. My problem is, if it's something I don't want to do, and he's wanting me to, I find myself questioning, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? But if it's something I want to do, but it conflicts with what God wants me to do, so I want to do it, but God doesn't want me to do it, then I say the same thing. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? So what are we looking for? We're looking for if we're really engaging Him. And we're asking, Lord, show me and guide me. When you are making that decision, when you're making that commitment, when you're making that change, surrender, whatever that is, is there a peace? That's it. If there is a peace, then it's God. Come on. And He knows that. So, is it Jesus that's calling you out of the boat? second lesson we want to learn from this experience is make sure you keep your eyes on Jesus when the storms come. I know you know this, but the storms will come. Anytime we're out, life is going to present storms. Stuff happens that we can't control, we can't fix, we can't stop it. That's what a storm is. But it's in those times of stormy weather, of those seasons of storms, when all of a sudden we get to see the level of our faith. And the people that we're trying to share our faith with, the people that we're ministering to, we're leading, that we're following Jesus along with, they get to see who we are. In fact, I love the old quote. It says that smooth seas don't make skillful sailors. You see, anyone can follow Jesus, and anyone can do really a lot of things that are challenging as long as it's easy. It doesn't cost you anything. It's not hard. It's not a challenge. Anybody can do that. Take basketball, for instance. Anybody can go to this gym afterwards. We'll give you a gym slot. We can video it and watch it. Anybody can go in there. You said, well, I don't know basketball. Or, well, you know what? You can go in there. I can give you a basketball and I can say, I want you to make ten shots. Now, it may take you a little while. We've got little goals on the side, you know, this sort of thing. It can take a while. And you can feel like, you know what? I did it. And you might feel like you're a basketball player because you made ten shots. In and out. There's no new basketball. You don't need to be signing up if that's you. Okay. But if I say, you know what? To really find out if you can play basketball, if that's your skill, we're going to bring someone to guard you. And it's okay, you've got to make 10 shots now. Isn't that kind of where we get? Is, is that really something I'm good at? Is that something that I'm 
I'm still there. So when it comes to faith and when it comes to I'm following Jesus and when it comes down to this is who I am, this is my identity, I'm a follower of Jesus. Anyone can follow Jesus when it seems like all you're getting is all you want. But all of a sudden when life hits you and something happens that you don't deserve and something happens that hurts you to your core, and something happens that you never thought would happen. How do you walk through that? It's going to show the world and those especially who know you well really are following Jesus. It doesn't mean that you respond to it perfectly, but it means that your eyes are on Jesus. And you're trusting in Him regardless of what's happening. I find it very interesting that when he saw the wind, that's when he was afraid. Now, here's the very interesting part in that is this. The storm had been going on the whole time. So it wasn't like he stepped out of the boat and then the storm came up. So he saw Jesus through the storm. He got out of the boat in the midst of the storm. And then he's walking on the water in the storm. And then what changed? It seems really basic, but we do this often, even as we follow Jesus. He was looking at Jesus. He was celebrating this. He was having an amazing time. And then all of a sudden, he goes, wait a minute. Look at what I'm doing. Thank you. 
lose sight of who's been guiding us and who's been faithful and who's been with us the whole time, all of a sudden our energy is not geared toward putting our faith and resting our assurance in Him and His strength and His promises and His faithfulness. All of a sudden we start having some conflict within us. We stop remembering how faithful and good and merciful Jesus is. And we start looking at the world and we start looking at our responsibilities and our burdens. And even those things that we have no control of that we just kind of bring up and say, well, what if this happens? And all of a sudden, instead of being focused, instead of being at peace in the middle of the storm, all of a sudden we're overwhelmed by the storm. Why? What changed? We gave the storm too much of our attention. Amen. That's what changed. What I'm not saying is that we ignore the storm. I'm not saying that you ignore your responsibilities. What I'm saying to you is that Peter was only able to walk on the water because his eyes, his focus was on Jesus. You and I are only able to manage and get through life and all that the enemy or all that life has of us Third thing, make sure you call out to Jesus when you begin to sink. I hope this helps. Maybe you trust it helps me. So let me share it with you. Not only will there be storms, but you will experience some sinking along the way. How many of you, I know we don't have a lot of hand raised, but that's fine. I don't you think that. How many of you have failed on some level in your life while following Jesus? I'm not even look at you. If your hand's not up, you're a liar or you're an introvert. Okay? I'm good. I'm good either way. Okay? No joke. All right. So, but you think about it. Even as we follow Jesus, there's been something that God has asked of us that we just didn't do, or there's something that said God said no to that we did. And we have people that, that follow Jesus throughout Scripture, right? You had, you had David, we could go on and on. There's a lot of stories of him. You had Peter, you had Moses. And again, you could go on and on and on. And what that shouldn't do is it shouldn't give us an excuse to say, well, they fell, I can fail, and God understands. That's, that's not the point. The point is we need to understand that we're flawed and we're limited. And even as we're be, being sanctified, and even if we're being set apart, and even if we're pursuing holiness, all of that just means that there are going to be moments, there are going to be days where we fail. And we fail. And that's exactly what happened to Peter. And I want you to watch this. Peter is sinking, and he simply calls out to him as he's beginning to sink, it says. He cried out, Lord, Save me. And watch this. Immediately, so Jesus was either close or all of a sudden he was, like, he was there. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and called him. So what's interesting is in all of this is the storm is raging. It's been raging. Peter steps out in the middle of the storm. He's walking on water toward Jesus in the storm. All of a sudden, he takes his eyes off of Jesus for a little while. And all this stuff is kind of happening fast. But I want you to watch this. All of a sudden, he, he recognized the storm. And all of a sudden, Jesus kind of gives him a certain amount of time to refocus. He gives him a certain amount of time to recognize, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not me. I'm not doing this. He's giving me the power to do this. I need to stop being overwhelmed by the storm. It's always been here. It'll always be here. So I need to focus on him. Because here's the deal, guys. You want to talk about the miracle? A miracle still would have taken place if Peter was walking on a calm lake. Hey, man. It, it's still walking on water. It's just interesting in the story that there's a storm brewing. And all of a sudden, this is happening. He's all of a sudden, he's looking. And at some moment, Jesus recognizes Peter has completely shifted his focus to the storm away from me. And he decides, all right, if you're going to focus. 
focus on that. Very good. As he's falling, he calls out. And I love that word immediately. I love that we serve a Savior who doesn't give us what maybe we deserve sometimes. Because we're flawed. And this is Peter. Peter gave Jesus a lot of his trouble and headaches, I imagine. But what Jesus doesn't do is he doesn't let him fall into the water and bob up and lean down and say, I told you. <laughs> How's this working out for you? Are you going to trust me from now on? No. Immediately, he caught him and he pulled him up. I think it, instead of always asking why, why God is this, this happening, why God is, what if we begin to ask what? What? Are you trying to teach me in this? Not just when you exercise great faith to do something that requires great faith, but also when we do fail, when we are sinking, we're overwhelmed by the storm, we're overwhelmed by the burden, we're overwhelmed by our responsibilities, and we're not trusting Him, we're not focused on Him. What do you want me to learn as I do cry out to you? And as you pull me up, and we walk back to the boat, what are you showing me about me? The fourth lesson. Make sure you don't let your failures keep you from following Jesus. Back to the boat. This is Peter. He, he wrestled with pride a little bit. So I want you to think about it. I don't think I'm, I'm really embellishing this story, but that's what pastors do sometimes, okay? But what I would like to think is that at some point, Peter felt proud. Like he's walking on water, he stepped out there, he did amazing things, and all of a sudden, what happened? He, he sank, and now he's wet, right? On top of all this stuff. And so he's coming back to the boat. Who's also in the boat? All his friends. Does anybody have friends that pick on you? Does anybody have friends? that are good at finding those buttons and pressing them. I have good friends like that. And I'm a good friend like that, okay? And we have friends like that. If you don't have friends like that, you have family members like that, okay? And so, I want you to think about it. Think about it. Peter, how he must have felt going back to the boat. He doesn't understand really his role just yet about what he's going to be doing, but, but he knows. He knows. He was doing something amazing and then all of a sudden, he wasn't. And he's coming back to that boat. And I'm not trying to throw stuff into stuff, that, the things that aren't here. But what I would like to believe is that on the way back to the boat, remember, Peter is back on the water. And I like to believe that Jesus is an encourager and that he is encouraging Peter all the way back. I like to believe that Jesus is not saying to Peter, man, you messed up. You were doing great until you weren't. I like to believe that on the way back to the boat, Jesus was saying, I'm so proud of you, Peter. I'm so proud of you. Just remember why you were able to walk on the water. Why you were able to do something that you could never do on your own. And so when you're facing something like that later on, remember, just keep trusting me. Just keep trusting me. The early American Indians had a unique practice of training young braves. On the night of a boy's 13th birthday, 
After learning hunting and scouting and fishing skills, he was put on one final test. He was placed in the dense forest to spend the entire night alone. Until then, he had never been away from the security of the family and tribe. But on this night, he was blindfolded and taken several miles away. When he took off the blindfold, he was in the middle of some thick woods, and he was terrified. Every time a twig snapped, he visualized a wild animal ready to pounce. After what seemed like an eternity, that a dawn broke and the first rays of sunlight entered, and entered the interior of the forest. Looking around, the boy saw flowers, trees, and the outline of a path. And then to his utter astonishment, he beheld the figure of a man standing just a few feet away, armed with a bow and arrow. It was his father. He had been there all night long. I love to think of this. When I think about not just the dark seasons of life, but in any season of life, I am never anywhere as a follower of Jesus without the Holy Spirit being within me and around me. Amen. If I have a fear, it's meant to scare me away from what God is asking of me. And it's an opportunity to have faith, to trust that God is with me through any. Whatever. 